Wow, welcome to Elkview Baptist Church. So glad you're here today on a soggy Sunday. But the heat's on, the lights are on, and we're praising the Lord. It is so good to have you today. I am Pastor Charles. It's my privilege to pastor here at this congregation. And if you're new in attendance, I've already met a couple that are new here today. We just welcome you. And Elkview Baptist is a church we hope that God's people can belong grow and serve together. So again, welcome to our service. You know, today, church family, it is our, how many? 107 years anniversary. So happy anniversary, Elkview Baptist. We have a few activities planned today. Immediately after the morning service, everyone is invited uh, right down to the opposite end of our buildings we're going to have a lasagna spaghetti uh, with all the salads and sides and homemade desserts. It's going to be delicious. By the way, it's all homemade. So um, Karen spent some time on lasagna and Kip and, and, and let's see. Um, Nancy, did you get that pan of lasagna? You know if Nancy baked it, it's great, okay? Kip and Jerry are the heavy lifters there with the meal, but come on down and let's linger in fellowship after church today. And church family, your bulletin, isn't it pretty? Got all this nice color on it. And I hope you will notice the activities of the church life this week. But one in particular, teens. If you've got a teenager, or you, uh, someone in your family is in that teen group, we have a big event this Saturday for the teens, so make sure they're aware of that. All right. Well, it's wonderful to have you here today. Why don't we settle our hearts and I'll voice our opening prayer, and then we'll hear from the choir this morning. Would you bow with me, please? <coughs> our Heavenly Father, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And that power that works in us will be referred to today in the message. It's your spirit power, the Holy Spirit. And it is to you as we ascribe worth this morning, Father, and we are only here because of the grace and mercy shed abroad in our heart through Jesus Christ. And we look for the Holy Spirit power to be evident among us. Begin with our choir and touch them. Use them. Open our hearts to all you would speak today in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
church, please stand and let's worship the Lord together.
good this is running after it's running after me your good this is running after it's running after me when my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your good this is running after it's running after me your good this is running after This is running after, it's running after me. My life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been And an example of that is our team getting to take a trip um, at the end of January to a worship conference. And during that conference, um, we were able to stand back in the audience and worship. And it was just such a sweet time of remembering why we get up here. And this song that we're about to sing kind of unified us as a team again on the reason why we're up here. And it's because God gives us the opportunity and we get to walk with him daily. And we should be trying to do our best to do that. And we should be abiding with him. So this song has really helped center us back. And we pray that that will happen for the congregation as well. So as you guys learn this song with us, sing out. Um, let us abide with him.
Happy anniversary, 107th anniversary. I'm going to pray in just a second, but if you all allow me to, uh, I want to read a couple verses and comment on them. Um, Fifteen years ago, thanks to Holy Spirit leading and Ashley Henderson, we came to help you Baptist. Good times, bad times, as we all have had them in life. But I have to say that uh, I love this church family. The Lord has blessed me with many help, mentorships, uh, just loving prayer from so many in the church family. And, you know, it is, uh, it's just amazing. I think we're in a great location. We have a great church. And God has blessed us with a more amazing spot in the future. And we're tied in, probably till Jesus comes back. We're tied in with the high school. How amazing is that? We're linked. They use us. They need us. And we're right up there with them. So praise God for that. So I'm excited about our EBC as a church building. And, and you know, David had a Psalms 27, 4. David said, one thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. Amen. David thought it was so, and you know, the, the temple wasn't built yet. David was in a tent, and he thought it was so important, and, and he cherished that, and we should. We should thank the Lord for this, and it represents God and his people. <laughs> but I want to mention something that Paul told us that's even more important. 1 Corinthians six nineteen. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that ye are not your own? Here's the church. I see temples all over the place. The Holy Spirit and, and how we respond to that. We need to pray, church, as we're getting ready to pray. I die daily and walk with Jesus. Because when we go out, we represent God. And when we come back here, we represent God as Elview Baptist. But it starts right here. It starts with George. How do I respond? How do I yield to the Holy Spirit? Am I serving God with all of my heart, all of my soul, and all of my mind? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy. We thank you for grace. 
We thank you for the many years, Lord, that our brothers and sisters ahead of us, Lord, has faithfully served you and walked daily with all their heart, all their mind, all their soul, and all their mind. Because of that, you've blessed this building and this grounds. And we ask you, Lord, going forward, that you work in us, grow us, that we shine that light brighter, we share the gospel, we love and help one another and others in the community, Lord, for your glory and not ours, for the spreading of the gospel, Lord, and for your ultimate kingdom for eternity. I pray for each and every brother and sister here, Lord, that we commit and submit to you and realize the Holy Spirit dwells within us and that we represent you, God. And we need to live that every second of every hour of every day. Now help us to get self out of the way, Lord, and receive your message. I pray for Brother Charles, Lord, as he brings it. Help him to get self out of the way and delivers it just like you gave it to him. In Christ's name, amen. true. His wounds has paid our ransom. Haven't we been nurtured this morning? What peace, what joy has filled the room? What love has been expressed? You know what that is? That is a byproduct of the Holy Spirit working here this morning. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm just so thankful for 
the godly music we've been participating in. Romans 8 is where we're at this morning. Romans 8. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> a few times in my life, my dad said, get out there and finish what you started. So last week, we started a message. And we were in Romans 6. And we said that although we have this sin nature strapped to our back, Romans 6 says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of death? So that sin nature is there, and it's strapped to our back. And Romans 6 proclaims, We are dead to sin, alive to God. So we're going to finish this message with the third point, listening to the Holy Spirit. Listening to the Spirit. We are not hopelessly bound to his sin nature. We are inseparably joined to Christ and a new nature. That's the teaching of Romans 6. And remember, we kind of wanted to redefine WWJD. Instead of what would Jesus do, it's walking with Jesus daily, participating in that new divine nature that is animated by our listening to the Holy Spirit. Romans 6 and Romans 8, powerhouse chapters on how we grow in Christ. Let's grow in Christ. Now, I want to take one minute and 45 seconds to read to you one of the longest quotes I ever read in a sermon. I've read this quote in this church four or five times, and it is my favorite when it comes to the importance of the Holy Spirit's role in our spiritual growth. The late Dr. Charles Stanley wrote in his book, The Wonderful Spirit-Filled Life, here's what he said, quote, for too many believers, the Christian life boils down to simply doing the best they can. There is no dynamic, no power, and there is no real distinctive that can be attributed to anything other than discipline and determination. I meet believers all the time whose doctrine can be summed up in two statements. Nobody's perfect, and God understands. For them... Life is a long string of joys and sorrows with the promise, if we're in Christ, the promise of heaven at the end. Somehow the details of life are void of the divine fingerprints. After all, business is business. Boys will be boys. Everybody is doing it. And come on, we got to be realistic. I'm still reading a quote. To the outsider looking in, there's often little or no difference between the lifestyle, the thought life, the habits of a Christian, and the heathen neighbor. If the Christian lifestyle is simply a matter of doing our best, there was no need for God to send the Holy Spirit to help us. God is looking for imperfect men and women who are willing to learn to walk in moment-by-moment moment, dependence on the Holy Spirit. Believers who have become discontent with surviving and have taken the time to investigate everything God's Spirit offers in this life. End of quote. That's preaching. That's a great book, The Wonderful Spirit-Filled Life, and it was the first book I ever read, really, uh, on the working of the Holy Spirit in the individual Christian, and it certainly ignited something in me. Now I would like to begin the message with verse number 9. Romans 8, verse number 9. <clears throat> the Bible says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ... He is not Christ. The first point we'd like to make from Romans 8 about listening to the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is an identifying spirit, an identifying spirit. Verse 11 says, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not Christ's. 
A Christian without the Holy Spirit is like a hamburger with no meat. A Christian without the Holy Spirit is like a 10-cylinder engine with no spark plugs. A Christian without the Holy Spirit is an imposter. Verse number 9 says these phrases, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not Christ's. You know, remember that old commercial um, years ago about the jug of milk that we keep in our refrigerator and it said, got milk. And it's like, yeah, you got it, right? It's in the fridge. And uh, buy it from our particular brand, you know, got milk. Um, If you've got the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, that is the deposit, a divine deposit. That is the new nature. He is the divine nature that we cooperate with and always, 100% of the time, leads us to newness of life. Not all in one step, but over a process of yielding, we grow I want you to notice something beautiful right here in the text about the identifying Spirit of God. This will ignite you to understand what he's up to in your life. Look with me. It won't be on the screen, but let your eyes fall into verse 14. Verse 14. Do you see with there in verse 14, it says, sons of God. Do you see that phrase? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are Sons of God. You see that? Sons of God, verse 14. Okay, now, fall down to verse number 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are, what does it say, church family? Children of God. Sons of God is in the context. Children of God is in the context. Let's go on to verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of who? Heirs of God. Okay, three tiers. Or right here, don't tell me that spiritual growth does not come in stages. It absolutely does. The life of the disciples themselves walking with Jesus demonstrates that. You don't get it all at the moment of conversion. You do get the full potential at the moment of conversion. But my friends, I'm in a journey and I'd better be growing. (laughs) The Spirit of God, now the three phrases I just shared with you, it said sons of God, children of God, heirs of God. It shows a progression. The Greek language shows it better, actually, than our English language because that first phrase, sons of God, happens to be being born. It's talking about a very young infant that is born into the family of God. And then children of God, is ta- it's a whole different Greek word, children. It's a whole different word, and it's talking about those who are growing in maturity And then heirs of God is a third stage, and that is when we are in our glorified state, having received the full benefit of salvation, and we are one with the Lord, and we are heirs. Do you see the progression? The Holy Spirit is an identifying spirit. He is the one that takes us and draws us to the Father to begin with, convicts us of our sin, converts our soul, seals us into the family of God, and he will work as we yield and grow us up as we walk in a step with him. So Dr. Stanley was so right. The Lord is looking for The Lord is uh, looking for imperfect men and women who are willing to learn to walk in moment-by-moment dependence on the Holy Spirit. So I ask this question, since my profession of faith, since that time, and for me, I was seven years old when I professed Christ as my Savior, have I ever experienced the Holy Spirit teaching me, guiding me, convicting me, Have ever experienced his work in my life? When we have the Spirit, we are in Christ. And he will work this way in every believer. And he will move us along. He's an identifying Spirit. He joins us at spiritual birth and grows us in Christ. I also would like to point out the Holy Spirit in verse number 9 is an indwelling Spirit. Let's look back at verse 9 again. Most of this message 
springs forth from the text of verse 9, but all the concepts are supported in this whole chapter. You could read this chapter this week and take the outline, put it in your bulletin, and you could chew on it, meditate on it, and um, prove it if it is true. Look in verse 9 again. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Does anybody... <clears throat> Let's have a little fun with this here. Take the phrase, if the Spirit of God dwells in you. Did you note the emphasis? What potential, what record-breaking potential exists within the believer? The Spirit of God dwells in me. Wow. You know, people are talking a lot about today the potential of artificial intelligence, AI, and we hear it all over the news about the potential there. And artificial intelligence has been around a long time. We already, we, I think, I trust we know that a lower form of artificial intelligence is being used. Every time you do a Google search, every time you click on an ad, there's a certain amount of AI at work in the background that makes the next pitch that you will see. And whenever I'm in route with my GPS and I'm going from here to yonder and there's a roadblock or sometimes there's a speed trap over there and that GPS is using a certain low level of artificial intelligence and it will suggest to me another way to go about things. So we've already witnessed lower levels of artificial intelligence, but there's a buzz today as to the potential, even the harmful potential, that AI can start making decisions at higher levels and things that we don't want done can get done. Um, especially with weapon systems. So we're all aware of that positive potential and that negative potential. But here, when it comes to the Spirit of God, it says in the Bible, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, you have potential, and it's only for the positive. Isn't that refreshing? It's only for the good. Think of it. The Spirit of creation dwells in you. The same Spirit. In the beginning, God created the heavens the universe and all the galaxies and the earth, that spirit dwells in you. What potential? The spirit of revelation dwells in you. Think of this. Holy men of God were moved along by the spirit of God. They did not write from their own brain. The Holy Spirit moved them along. That spirit of revelation abides in me. What potential. I got something else. The spirit of resurrection dwells in me. You know, the Bible says again and again, it is the spirit that gives life. It is the spirit that quickens. And we'll be seeing those phrases in just a moment. The spirit, the resurrection spirit to make all things new. We are called to newness of life. We are called to grow in Christ. We got spirit. We can grow and we must grow and he will work it in a way that we are compelled to grow. The indwelling spirit gives us tremendous potential, but not only that, the indwelling spirit confirms our permanency in the body of Christ. Would you notice with me again the phrase in verse 9? Let's look at it. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, dwells is the focus of this point. You know, that is not the word for passes by you. That is not the word for visits you. It is the word for residing, residing with you, abiding with you. The Spirit of God dwells in you. I will never leave you nor forsake you, Jesus said. And how in the world is that happening? It is because he has deposited in us the divine nature animated through the Holy Spirit. His very Spirit is with us. 
It is to your advantage I go away, Jesus said. I will have to go away, but the helper will come when I depart. You see, life is not a series of just ups and downs, and we got to pull through do the best we can. Heaven forbid, I can't live the Christian life. The Holy Spirit. He dwells in me. There's a permanent residence he's made up. This is why I hold to the scriptural doctrine of if I have truly been born into the family of God, the Holy Spirit will never leave me nor forsake me. I am redeemed and he will never leave me nor forsake me. So the question is never, had, what, what, what would Charles do that would cause Charles to lose his salvation? Could I possibly lose my salvation? That, that's never the question. The question is, was I ever saved to start with? Because when the Holy Spirit has taken up a dwelling with you, he abides with you forever. Theology is so clear on that. And all up and down the Elk River is nonsense is taught on this point. I understand where they come from, but I'm telling you, the doctrine is different. And um, just want to point that out. Let's move on. Um, the indwelling spirit gives us tremendous potential. It states our permanency in Christ. He abides in us as a permanent resident. And then the indwelling spirit, it says the spirit of God dwells in who? You. I would say that the greater has occupied the lesser. The Holy Spirit dwelling in me, to what purpose? Well, Romans 6 said it this way, that we would walk in newness of life. The Holy Spirit dwelling in me, is he getting preeminence? The greater has occupied the lesser. The Holy Spirit is not dwelling in me to give me advice. No, the Holy Spirit dwells in me to determine my direction and my decisions. He's not an advice giver. The Holy Spirit isn't dwelling in you to take over my agenda. No, the Holy Spirit dwells in me to set his agenda. The Holy Spirit isn't dwelling in me to be in a Sunday morning closet. The Holy Spirit is dwelling in me to give me the fullness of the divine nature, newness of life. You see, the Holy Spirit has much work to do in our lives. And let's wake up. Let's wake up. Let's grow in Christ and invite him afresh and new through yielding ourselves dying to self, realizing we are alive to God and we are not helplessly bound. We are inseparably linked to Jesus. And his nature is ready to be animated through the Holy Spirit's work in our life. I want to give you a couple questions here real quick before I preach more. Here's some application. Am I sensitive to the Holy Spirit? Here's a couple questions. Do I catch and deal with compromise in my life early? Am I sensitive to the Holy Spirit? Well, do I catch and deal with compromise early? Do I seek the Lord diligently on decisions? Do I spend time waiting in the presence of the Lord? I hope that we can say that consistently, yes, yes, yes. We consistently do these things. But the truth is, none of us flawlessly are sensitive to the Holy Spirit every moment. But he is looking for people who will moment by moment walk in dependence and in step with him. He wants to be preeminent. Do you know Colossians 1.18 says that Christ is the head of the church and that in all things Christ may be preeminent. In all areas of my life may Christ be preeminent. There is no area of my life that Christ can be left out of without Christ quenching the Holy Spirit of God's work. 
He must be preeminent. I'd like to ask you, what is first place in your life today? What is first place? Many times, someone would have to put their career, they would, they would think they have to put their career first. And they strive and they work so hard and they're starting to climb that ladder. And, and career uh, is a temptation that that might be preeminent in their life. Or someone else, maybe they're at a point in life where it is their, their, their they, they hate their job. But boy, they love that hobby they have. And that is preeminent. And they put that very high in their life and what they organize their life around. Someone would say, well, you know, thank God I'm not there. I'm a lot more noble than that. I'm a lot more scriptural than that. And they would say, I've put my family first. And... I would say, well, I'm glad your family is very high on the list, but is your family supposed to be first? I've put my church first. I say, well, I'm glad the church is included, but is the church... You see, my friends, it is Christ alone, his spirit, that must be given first place in our heart. Only then will life flow out of us as an abundant river and be effective at touching other lives. Jesus first. Jesus first. The indwelling spirit gives us potential and he deserves preeminence. But wait, there's more. The next point, the Holy Spirit is an indwelling spirit, but he is a spirit of power, a spirit of power. I want you to notice in verse number nine, do you see the phrase spirit of God? Do you see the phrase spirit of Christ? Well, guess what? The Bible just did. Deified Jesus Christ. <laughs> no great revelation for us, but there's a lot of people around the world that don't get that. The spirit of Christ is God Almighty, the divine spirit. Uh, you know, everything in your life that relates to spiritual victory depends on the appropriation of the Holy Spirit's power. Do we have power attending our life? Listen to Acts 1.8. You will receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Power to actually speak and witness for Christ. All spiritual advancement in the life, in the Christian life, and in the kingdom depends on the appropriation of the Spirit's power. Quote this verse with me if you know it. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Start thinking about now the manifestations of Holy Spirit power. If I were to ask you, what does Holy Spirit power look like? Someone may say, it's when Pastor Charles can lay his hand across the person and they'll fall to the floor and their twitching will quit. Okay? And someone else will say, well, Holy Spirit's power is manifested through another type of sign. But let's just look at the Bible and let's not miss the obvious of what Holy Spirit power looks like. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Well, Holy Spirit power is that when we would have reason to worry, we wouldn't be compelled by fear. That's Holy Spirit power. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Is there any love in the room? Is there any self-control in the, in the heart of a believer this morning? What is that? That is Holy Spirit power. Let's not miss the obvious. Romans 15, 13, listen to this verse about Holy Spirit power. Power. He is the indwelling spirit. He is the source of all victory. He is powerful and he's waiting to animate the divine nature that is residing in you. Romans 15, here it is. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. The power of the Holy Spirit generates joy and peace and hope. Can I hear hallelujah? Do we have the Holy Spirit? These are powerful demonstrations of his presence in our life. Love, self-control, joy, peace, hope. 
Yes. This is how we see the Holy Spirit's working in us. We may have the awfulest thing happen in our life and it knocks us down. But the righteous one rises up because the Lord is in them and invigorating them and bringing them up again to their feet. So let me hasten to move along here because we're going to eat. If your Christian life has consisted with a long period of grieving the Holy Spirit by sins committed or quenching him by things you have omitted or left out of your life, I have very good news for you this morning. He has not abandoned you. Confess today. Confess in your heart. Father, I have been ignorant. I have been ignoring the Holy Spirit's role in my growth. I have not realized my full potential, Heavenly Father. I want newness of life animated by the Holy Spirit. Please forgive me. Please take over as I seek to participate in the divine nature through the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the last point. The Holy Spirit, he is a identifying spirit. He is a indwelling spirit. And he is an invigorating spirit. Look at verse number 10. <clears throat> the language of this verse is challenging, but look at it. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. Well, my body don't feel dead to sin. The body is dead because of sin, and the spirit is life because of righteousness. Try this wording. Try this wording. I think this is very accurate. Even though the body is destined to die because we are sinners, the spirit gives life to that same body today that we may serve God. Now go back and look at the text. It says the spirit is life. The Holy Spirit is is the newness of life for you and I today. If you got him working, release him out of the closet of your life and put him in the living room and let him run the show. Let's grow in Christ. This is how it happens. You know, um, look in verse number 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will what does it say, church? Give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit. That's it. These bodies are condemned to die. They are under the death penalty. But my friends, my spirit is not. And he will give life. He will animate for his glory these mortal bodies. That's Christianity 101. That is the teaching that we, what we do in this body matters and the Spirit of God can take control as we would come humbly and yield ourselves to him. So we are alive to the Bible now. You know, when we pray, when you read the Bible, just never just read the Bible. We go to the Bible and we say, Father, reveal yourself to me so I can adjust, so I can turn to you and turn from myself. We're alive to the Bible. We are alive in prayer. I, I would love to pray this consistently every day. Father, guide me to align my life immediately to your will. When we pray like that, we will start sensing God taking over. We will sense his sweet presence. We are alive to the Bible. We are alive in prayer. We are, friends, as we taught last week, alive in God, following the Spirit's promptings. The Spirit gives life. He animates our mortal bodies. That's this week's teaching. Same concept. Alive to God, the Spirit is the one giving life. Father, impress, your, impress on my heart specific steps of obedience. So, I'm going to close up here. I want to read part of Stanley's quote again. I ask you to evaluate. Do you believe this last part, really believe Dr. Stanley is accurate. The scripture points to an invigorating spirit that will quicken us, indwell us. God is looking for imperfect men and women who are willing to learn to walk 
in moment-by-moment dependence on the Holy Spirit. Believers who have become discontent with surviving and have taken the time to investigate everything God's Spirit offers to them today. On January 14th, I preached a message on our theme this year. The message was, Let's Grow in Christ, taken from 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we preached that message January 14th. It was a bad weather day, and there were like 73 of us present. It's online. You can go back and read it if you want. I began that message with this illustration. Let's grow in Christ. Sometimes growth looks different than you think. We already talked about dynamic power. The Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, self-control. But sometimes growth looks fundamentally different than you think. Let's grow in Christ. Here's the illustration. The Chinese bamboo seed is planted, watered, and fertilized, but nothing happens in the first year. The second year, it is watered and fertilized, but still the Chinese bamboo remains dormant. In the third and fourth years, it is watered and fertilized, but still nothing happens. Most often, during the course of the fifth year, that seed, in a six-week period, grows 90 feet The question is, did it grow 90 feet in six weeks or in five years? And the obvious answer is it was five years. Because if they had not watered it, if they had not fertilized it for five years, it would never have grown. How does that relate to let's grow in Christ? Here's how. Spiritual growth is often quietly in process. It's not yet visible. But when it begins to be seen, it can be very dramatic. Glory to God. He is the spirit that gives life to our mortal bodies. May we never forget that. The life of Christ to be lived out through us. That is what Jesus called us to. Would you stand together, please, with our heads bowed? And we're going to conclude our service this morning with a moment of silent prayer. So with our heads bowed, invite God's people to pray. Are you dead to sin? Are you alive to God? Are you listening to the Holy Spirit Take a moment, rejoice in the Lord about the great truths. We are not hopelessly bound. We are inseparably linked to the spirit of creation. What potential we have. Rejoice in that. Respond to the Lord in prayer silently, please, as we pause and wait a moment. Our Father, I hesitate to end this service. There has been such a sweet spirit throughout. So we would just decide we're not going to end the service. We're just simply going to say a prayer and ask your spirit to draw those of us really needing closer walk with you. Oh, Lord, 
you said, let us grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Teach us to understand self, the old man, went to the grave with Jesus. And then we came out of that grave with a new nature animated by the Holy Spirit abiding in us. We are inseparably linked. May we rejoice and let us grow in Christ. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I have a moment of instruction for us about um, what's happening down the hall. So um, in just a moment, we'll dismiss you. And as, of course, as you go to the Fisher Hall, here's the critical part. There are lines on both sides of the Fisher Hall, the auditorium side and the church office side. So on both walls, please line up to go to the serving tables. And the serving tables are set up to be served on both sides of the table. So on both sides of the Fisher Hall, we line up, but go down both sides of the Fisher table. That means there's four serving lines. This will go very fast. We're going to have a wonderful meal, wonderful fellowship. And then after that, we have some volleyball, some other activities. Pastor Curry, would you ask God's blessing on our lunch today? We're going to say the blessing right here, right now. And... Um, and then when you get in there, please start eating. All right, Pastor Curry, thank you. <clears throat>